Welcome to the fish tank. Hey everybody, Fishman here. Welcome to the second video of my series where I am trying to build a, a belt sander. I've never done this before, so this could go well or poorly. Uh, these are the bearings I'm going to use, and if you noticed on the uh, box, it, the last part of the code was 2RS, which means they are uh, rubber sealed on both sides, so it keeps uh, a little bit of filings and whatnot from getting into any of the workings and gumming them up. Uh, these are fairly cheap bearings, I mean, they're only like three bucks. Uh, I suspect they're Chinese made. Uh, and you can see the, they're not exactly the fit I need for this half inch rod, so I'm going to have to make some bushings for it. Uh, but they run smoothly, and uh, I bought a few extras just in case uh, something wears out. And I'm going to fit them on this rod between two bolts. I'm not going to show you any of the uh, cutting really because, well, it was all in the first video, so I'm just going to cut blanks here out of the stock. And then I'm going to put them into the lathe, and I'm going to initially bore a 3 8 inch hole. Uh, there are going to be uh, three of these idle wheels. Uh, I'm just going to show you the, how to machine uh, one, obviously. And what I'm going to do in the next video is I will uh, start building the framework for all these to fit on, and so I can uh, spread out the, uh, well, 72 inches of belt that's, uh, uh, this is for the sander. Uh, once I have this 3 inch hole uh, bored out, I'm going to switch over to a boring bar. And what I'm going to do then is I'm going to bring it uh, out to the half inch that I require. I'm not going for a friction fit or anything, I just want them to fit on smoothly without too much play. Uh, I don't think it's going to be that critical, and if I have to swap out parts later on, I don't want to have to you know, force anything or end up having to build new uh, bushings or whatever. So. Uh, I'm not going to be too critical about this, but I do want a reasonably uh, not sloppy fit. How's that? Like I said, I haven't built one of these before, so uh, this could all go uh, quite poorly. <laughs> uh, but uh, I finished. Oh, sorry. At this point, I've finished uh, uh, boring out the hole, and now I'm just uh, fitting on the uh, collar where the uh, where the uh, bearing is going to fit, and. This should just be one more pass, I think. And there we go. Uh, there's a bit of a flange there, so I'm going to trim down that a bit. Uh, I uh, cut these blanks all slightly long, so they will all require some trim at some point in time. And here I've done the other side, obviously, and they fit together quite nicely. And then now what I need to do is move on to the wheel part itself, which is a piece of solid 3-inch. Um, aluminum and I'm going to bore a hole through it, which I think I already did on this piece. Uh, anyway, this, this is what it started off being like, and then I'm going to face that, and then I'm going to start boring a hole through it. Um, in this particular case, uh, the hole is really irrelevant, uh, as long as it's bigger than the diameter of the rod I was using. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use a series of uh, uh, well, drill bits here. These are fairly good precision bits and then I'm going to just drill a one inch hole finally and that's going to suffice. That'll give me a, a little bit of free play in there but it's not really important because uh, it's just empty space. Uh, what matters is the socket where I'm going to fit the uh, the bearing into it and that I'm going to machine more closely because that has to fit uh, quite snugly. I like these drill bits nice and sharp. Alright, what I'm going to do now is once that hole is drilled all the way through, I'm going to uh, machine out the uh, seat for where the bearing is going to go. And for this part I'll be using a boring bar. Now I have calibrated how deep I need to make the hole, and I've marked that onto the wheel where I'm advancing the carriage. I uh, can't see that unfortunately from this angle, um, but what I'm going to do is do the passes and uh, gradually and make the hole wider until I have the right diameter. Now these uh, idle wheels, like the main part of the wheel, uh, just as I was doing with the bushings, um, they are cut so that they are about a sixteenth inch uh, longer than they need to be, just in case uh, I mess up and uh, don't end up with um, you know, the hole being the right depth, in other words cut too deeply, I can uh, trim the wheels to the right size. So this is going to go on for a little bit, and eventually I'll get a, a nice uh, uh, bracket where 
the, there you go, you can see it now, where the bushing can now sit in place. Unfortunately, this part was uh, a little out of focus for most of it, so I just got you some stills. And once I have all the seats uh, machined for where the bearing's gonna go, I'm just trimming the wheels now to the uh, same size. Uh, you do end up with a, well, you're cutting with a saw, so they're not exactly precision. Uh, this is not really necessary, I suspect, but uh, you know, when you start doing these things, you tend to try to make everything as even as possible. So I'm just going to machine off the uh, the wheels so they're all exactly, well, exactly, <laughs> within reason, the same height. And uh, for some reason, I decided to show you. Uh, these are just two of the wheels. There's a third one's right behind it, and I tried to uh, aim the camera right along the top so you can see them, but yeah, you can't see that one. So I just move it out here, and uh, as you can tell, they're all as close as, well, as close as I can get anyway. I'm sure someone can do a much better job than I, but I'm just uh, starting out on this sort of thing. Uh, after this, what we're going to do is um, uh, take care of those uh, sharp edges. I'm just going to machine down the, uh, um, the outside and inside corners. That way, uh, I don't think it's really going to matter again, but... Uh, it's just easier to handle and you know, getting sharp burrs off that way. So after I've done this, I'm going to uh, show you how these all fit together. Um, and then this will be basically the end of this video. Uh, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to start building all the framework. And as you remember from the first uh, video, that there, that's going to be made out of a two inch square tube aluminum with a quarter inch wall. Which will be more than solid enough for uh, this project. At this point, the uh, belts haven't come in for this sander. I'm hoping they show up soon because I want to uh, you know, test this out before I get too far into this and uh, basically I'd be stuck. <laughs> uh, as I said in the first video, uh, this uh, project is being... I'm doing this because I have a large project I'm doing for a three tank build and it's going to be a large aluminum stand and the tanks are all going to need to uh, fit together into a nice sort of, uh, well not waterfall, but an overflow system. So they all have to fit uh, quite precisely and I'm going to need to be able to machine down, or sorry, sand down, in this case the aluminum, uh, as quick, as uh, accurately as possible. And now I'm just doing, I think, the last inside corner here and then we're going to switch over to uh, fitting these all on the wheels and showing you how they work. Unfortunately, fitting them on the half-inch rods with their uh, uh, all the bushings and bearings and idle wheels all together is not going to give me a uh, definitive answer as to whether or not this is a project that's going to work in the end, because I don't think that's really going to be uh, answered until I get these all under power. So in other words, have the frame built, have the wheels in place, uh, have the motor running, have a belt on it and see if I can uh, get these things all to balance out and to um, well, basically trim properly so I can get the belt to track where I want it to be and everything. But this is a step forward and let's see how all this fits together. As you can see there's a air gap there which uh, really doesn't matter in the least but everything fits nice and round and smooth and put the other wheel on and uh, well that's kind of silly doing it that way. I got rid of almost all the play in there, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to <laughs> put it on the rod and uh, we'll show you a better way, <laughs> a better angle of how that works. So we'll fit this on here. Each of the sets were machined uh, and kept together, as you can see they're lined up there on the right. Um, just in case there are small variations in it, uh, I wanted them to make sure they stayed with uh, what the ones they were uh, uh, made it up for. Yeah, this is a little tight. But it goes on. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to hand tighten it down. Uh, obviously you can tighten it down with the wrenches later on, but I just wanted to make sure it was in uh, where it needed to be without any rattling and uh, make sure the wheel turned properly. Once I have the bolt in place, we'll uh, give it a spin and see how it looks. And at first I kind of had the rod a little long here. It bounces around a bit, but I'm going to move it up shortly. There we go. And that's pretty good for me. So uh, next video is going to be... Oh, sorry. Here I've uh, machined it so it has the same kind of finish as the uh, drive wheel. 
And as I said, the next video is going to be me making the frame and fitting all this together and hopefully it'll all work. And uh, I will see you in the next video. Thank you for watching. Hey everybody, thank you for watching my video. If you liked it, please slap a like below. Or if you want to see more of this type of video or some of my other work, please subscribe to my channel. And I will see you there. Thank you very much for watching. Bye for now.